Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Liang Ping Tao. Thank you, uh, Michael, and thank you, Peggy. It was uh, very nice meeting you uh, here on the internet, and thank you all for joining this uh, this talk. Uh, okay, let me share my. I think I will share my uh, screen. Uh, okay, this this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, today, I'm uh, I'm going to talk about what's on my mind. I'm just uh, actually, I was, I was uh, still editing the uh, the slides uh, 15 minutes ago. So uh, <laughs> still, uh, there's a lot on my mind and not very organized at the point. But uh, I hope you uh, uh, can uh, understand me <laughs> probably. And then the the title is called "Towards a Shared Reality," and I'm going to explain that uh, in the following slides. And then it's just some observation that I that I have recent observation about image making and how and the idea of becoming images like everything is almost like uh can be photographed now so it's some observation and thoughts and that's the outline of the talk today uh first of all i'm going to just going to give you a very brief introduction of where i'm from and myself and in the place i work and then the second one is this uh risk and critique on image making i'm going to show you some project that i, I came across uh photography project I came across that I think is worth sharing with you guys. And then third uh, one is the, uh, how do we uh, do this uh, international exchange of photography under pandemic situation, uh, some, some thoughts. And actually uh, we just um, like for the past one, a year and a half, actually Taiwan is really safe from pandemic, but uh, unfortunately last, last month, uh, the situation turned a little bit severe, a bit different. So, uh, but we're learning uh, how to work from home. And I've been working from home for about a month, and then I haven't really talked to anyone uh, except my cat and partner. So, thank you. And then uh, the last one would be well, since the, the topic is about future. So, I'm going to introduce a, a little bit about the the, the first national institution of photography in dedicated to photography in Taiwan. It's called National Center of Photography and Images. And a little bit uh, uh, thoughts about, about the future in Taiwan. Okay, without further ado, first, uh, this is um, uh, where I found this, how far I'm from, uh, we're from each other. We're actually, uh, uh, this is Belfast and this is Taipei, it's, it's by my flight is like 18 hours. This is a bit long flight. I didn't know it was that long, but yeah. But and then time-wise, uh, Taiwan it, it's it's uh, 8 p.m. It's 6 p.m. over here. So actually, I'm from the future, and then I mean compared to the the Belfast. So uh, and then Taiwan, according to the last uh, last month's edition of Economist. Uh, it seems to be uh, they, they they call us the most dangerous dangerous place on earth. Well, because we are in between the, I mean, two superpower China and and the U.S. But I would argue uh, it's very different situation in here. And of course, the the threats from the uh, the, the China is they're being unfriendly more than worse than unfriendly towards us. But uh, but we're okay. We 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 stay strong. But uh, but it's a very different place uh, other uh, than the uh, the media has portrayed us. In fact, I would tell you that actually Taiwan is one of the most vibrant democracy in Asia, and we just uh, we are the first in two in twenty nineteen. We are actually the first uh, Asian country to legalize same sex marriage, and in addition to that, on top of that, and we have our first digital minister, and she's. Her name is Audrey Tan, is and she's actually a transgender. And the uh, the slides and the title of this talk is actually uh, inspiration. Again, inspiration from one of her points, and it goes like this: "It's our digital minister, and then it, it, she has this. Uh, I would like to share her point uh, with you really quickly, and it and it goes." When we see Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Things. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. 
when we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. Whenever we hear the singularity is near, let us remember the plurality is here. Uh, she's a very inspiring figure in Taiwan and, um, and perhaps outside Taiwan as well. And then uh, she, uh, she really helped uh, to make our government more open and transparent and accountable. And the way he deal with the pandemic and uh, social issues is really different. Basically, uh, we, we demand, we, we the people demand trust from the, uh, uh, I mean, we, we, we have all our rights and then it's not like the, the other way around that we, 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 we're trusted. It's, it's pre, pre, all pre-requested. The, the government has to, to earn our trust, not the other, not the other way around, like the, 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 the situation in different country, like our neighbors. Okay, anyway, that's a very brief introduction of where I was from, uh, this Taiwan. Okay, a little bit about myself. I'm, my name is Yang Bing Cao. Again, I curate shows from time to time. This is uh, two of the shows that I uh, used to, to create. Uh, one is a, more of a photo book exhibition. Another one is like about video and contemporary photography. That's what I do. And uh, in addition to that, I also teach uh, at times, um, like part times at universities. And I'm an I'm a adjunct uh, associate professor and, but it's a really complex situation because sometimes I feel like being an adjunct is not really helpful for this uh, like system because I think the, the students and some uh, the teachers deserve better than that. And then, but anyway, that's a different issue. Uh, and actually I, I have, I did some uh, personal project too. This is my website. And then that's my uh, previous uh, exhibition looks like but I don't really have the time for my personal project at the moment. And sometimes I did, I also involved in some public services, for instance, the establishment of national standard of photography in Taiwan. I was involved in a lot of uh, meetings, uh, considering uh, book publishing collections and exhibition. And of course I, I did some international exchange too, uh, which I will be addressing to that in the past. That was what we, we used to be uh, doing the, exchange that when this is Hong Kong Photo Fest, International Photo Fest in 2019, before the national security law, Hong Kong is a very different place now. And I don't know if I can really be physical there, uh, but, uh, but we are working together this year and in a very different form. So let's see what's, uh, what's, what's gonna happen. But now international exchange is more like this. We are working as an organization, uh, Live Out Photo Live is, uh, is collaborative Rating with two um, groups in Indonesia, so called and Royal Syndicates in Indonesia, Jakarta and Batum. And uh, we're working on the uh, Jakarta Biennale, and it was a very interesting uh, collaboration. I really enjoyed it, still working on. But uh, in addition to all that, I, I spent most of my time at this is a picture of me and my colleagues. As you, you can see, they're all very young. I'm the only middle-aged guy, and then they were like 20, <laughs> 20 something or early 30s. And then, yeah, they're really helpful. And I spent most of my time at li library doing a lot of work. So, and this is uh, the, the inside of the library, which is the, uh, the first photo book library in Taiwan. It's free and open to all. It's a nonprofit uh, special library dedicated to photography. And then the reason why we do it is not because I think we, we wanted we wanted library. No, it's more of a we want to address some of the issues that uh, concerning the community in, in photo community in Taiwan. That I mean, if you are researchers or, or a learner, you want to learn about photography in Taiwan, there's just uh, not enough uh, information or, or publication available, freely available, accessible. So that's one of the reason, main reason that we wanted to uh, run, uh, do this uh, library. We use it, we think library would be a good way to, um, to help researchers and young artists and, uh, and create and become a community hub where people can, where things happen like talks and events and then people can get together and sh have some shared experiences. 
and then over time we have more and more books and then we we can uh answer the the the, the question that we've been open uh asked ourselves is what is uh, photo uh taiwanese photography what how does taiwanese photography look like and as i was thinking library could be one way to respond to that so you can know the landscape the, the diversity and what are the most the major photographers and important works and events or like photo fans and events that really uh define the taiwanese experience in sense of photography okay and i'm almost done there uh, the idea is free and open to all if you want to come here to read the books see the exhibition photo book exhibition or events talks you don't have to make any reservation or pay any entrance fee or like membership no just go and walk in and it's all yours and then uh, as you can see it's a very humble beginning you can see the top left image uh we started in, from 2016 it was really really humble it's like uh this small space and it's it's all we started it was 400 books and then uh and then in two years in 2018 we received more than 3,000 photo books so you can see the community being very generous and supportive to us. And then in 2019, uh, we, we, have, we were at a very small space, but we, we found a disused public space. And then of course we don't have the money to renovate it. So we uh, launched a crowdfund campaign to, to renovate, basically rebuild uh, the, 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 the library. And now in 2020s, that's how it looks like and um, so and in the past we can accommodate we can serve like thirty-five thousand people annually like uh but now we're in a slightly bigger like bigger space we can accommodate like eight thousand uh user annually but uh and and in addition and more than that it's a because we are we we were on the third floor but now we move to the ground floor so we were the difference is really enable us to surf more. So we, we dis, when we talk to the architect and the designer, we, we told them we wanted to, the idea is free to all and we wanted to uh, do more. Meaning like if you're a wheelchair user or you are a uh, parent with uh, the, the, the baby car, then, then you can come in and can. So the, the idea is to design this space more friendly. It's not only bigger, but also more friendlier to where more people can feel comfortable uh, entering this uh, space. So you can see that we, we, we do see some new user coming to not just more user, but different different uh, group of people. Okay, so that's, that's that. And then, so it's basically a community supported space and by the pandemic had been uh, hit hard. So, but we'll see, we're surviving. <laughs> and then uh, we, we're working from home now, it's closed. And then uh, we're hoping that we're hoping the uh, pandemic will end soon and we can go back there and then uh, business is huge, but we're learning how to uh, do things uh, differently. And the future of live arts, uh, it would be, this is the last slide and then uh, for, the, for the live arts. And then I think we, uh, we were, what we wanted to do and what we learned from the pandemic is that we want the, the learning to continue we want the exchange to continue but how the important thing is to have to turn this uh the, the library more more digital uh more digital open so the two uh two things that is on my mind and it's something that we would definitely pursue in the future the first is the idea of public lending right i don't know the situation i think the uk has this a public lending right but the idea is that in taiwan it's a pioneer program the idea is that when you check out a physical book from the library, the government will fund the author and the publisher some money, will give them some money. In Taiwanese case, in Taiwan's case, the, uh, the, the author will get like, uh, like 10 cents, something like that. And then the publisher will get 30% uh, of like the 10 cents. And, uh, but it's only limited to physical book at the moment. But we wanted to like advocate that it should go to, uh, I mean, it should apply to digital lending, but we don't have this idea, uh, the idea of uh, control digital lending, which is 
an, an organization in in the, in the U.S. Uh, called Internet Archive. I, I think a lot of you are aware of this, uh, are familiar with this organization, and that's why they are promoting uh, the con uh, control digital lending, where you can uh, lend the uh, uh, you can borrow the book from the library digitally. It's very different from it's kind of it's a little bit different from the the ebook. And then I was thinking if we can combine the two, the public lending right where, and then the control digital lending, we can create a win-win-win situation, not only the government, but also the publisher author and the library, the cultural institutions. And I think that's the future, but, uh, but, but I'm not saying that the future is all going all digital. I don't, that's not, if it's all solely digital, I, I'm, not in, I'm not that excited. It has to be have a physical space in addition to the digital uh, freedom. So um, it can, it's not mutually exclusive. I think uh, they can coexist in some ways. And I'm still figuring, I'm trying to figure out how, how to do that. But anyway, so, okay. I hope that's a brief introduction of Taiwan and myself, a little bit about myself and library and our future plans. And now I'm going to share you uh, with some of the uh, uh, risk and critiques on image making and how we become image in the 21st century and then the risk, potential risk of that. This is a, um, a, a story that I, an investigative journalist, uh, journalism that I encountered like a couple of weeks ago, like the true story in, in Taiwan is basically uh, the the journalist hack and uh, they 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 hack into a uh, online chat group. Uh, the group of the, the group member were actually sharing some face swap videos of celebrities of their uh, some uh, politicians, mostly females, and then uh, and even their like ordinary people or like ex partners. And then the conversation there is just crazy and it's I mean it's mind blowing it's not in a very good way and but it's happening and then it's and then there's the law it's beyond the law it, there's no law for that at the moment they're just swapping the, the the face and then it's a little too a, a little same thing imagine that you have your photograph taken and then and use the AI uh, defect technology and applied it to the the videos and then which is totally different context and then you will be are they the same thing and then how do you if it, uh, that's a uh, criminal uh, if i mean that definitely hurts uh, a lot of people's feelings and then make a lot of people feel uncomfortable but um but you can really but for the time being the law is just it's really fall behind the, the technology, speed of te development of technology. And it's, uh, it's concerning because uh, I mean, you have no idea who the members are, who's watching and then, and who, and then how they're gonna use your, your portraits and then in what context. So um, that's one of the risks and, and it's happening. And then, uh, and more and more apps cell phone apps you can download it to face what and you can try it for free so it's it's going to be like very popular in in um, in near future in not so distant future so uh it's definitely there are things to uh to uh to be aware of and and it's happening in taiwan so i wanted to mention that and another one is uh, an artist called uh, uh, Shen Yu Zhen. He, here is one of his uh, uh, new work. It's about, it's basically uh, about how to, <laughs> the guy of how to take your ID photo through surveillance camera. So, but it's a, actually a video project. But of course, photography plays a very important part to it. And then, uh, so as you can see from the slides, here is a group of people utilizing the uh, street surveillance camera, all kinds actually. 
that was uh, meant for like monitoring the, uh, the the safety of the buildings or the traffic, but they use it for their ident identification card. And I think that was the very intriguing uh, ways of making portraits. I mean, I've seen some, uh, uh, I've seen, I remember seeing one uh, Chinese artist, I think he's very young, I can't remember his name. Uh, his, uh, uh, his performance art or, or, or performance art, conceptual art is really to uh, go uh, go to the go to go in, go to the surveillance camera in the school. He's a university MFA student, and he went into every corner of the the, the school where the surveillance camera store, and then he was standing there and staring at the the camera. Uh, it's simple as that. So it's really trying to ask the question: Who is looking at us, and why? And but now this artist, Taiwanese artist uh, Zhen Xianyu, is trying to uh, uh, very clearly asking the question, I mean, I mean, turn it, the, the surveillance camera into something useful, I mean, to us. To us, surveillance camera is really for public safety. I mean, uh, in, well, positively, it's for the public safety. And it's to us, uh, the, its relationship to us, it's not so uh, clear, but his uh, behavior, his performance, uh, is, his conceptual photography is really posed a very interesting question because he was performed in front of the camera and the results uh, was an ID uh, photo. And then the idea is to make a verifiable uh, uh, photograph that, is, you, that you can work, that can really work as a as an ID photo, and it actually made one at the end of the video that he 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 did he he, uh, he successfully <laughs> make an ID photo using the uh, surveillance camera, and the whole process was uh, kind of uh, kind of funny, but uh, uh, it's kind of dark humor uh, to me, and but you don't want it to be taken uh, to photograph for people who are. Care about the privacy, they, they probably don't like to see the, the surveillance camera that much, but uh, but he used it cleverly for their use because if you want to go to your ID photo taken, it's going to cost you some money. And but the thing is, uh, like it or not, as a citizen in a uh, in any country, you you will have you will have some picture taken in your lifetime, even you don't you reject any other uh, photography, but you still have to do photo for the uh, for your ID card like you know or your driver's license it just uh, it just seemed inescapable and then he was uh, doing this uh, in a very different way so I think it was really clever and then later I came across a crow from uh, but the surveillance camera to me uh, is not only their presence, the camera, the physicality, but also what's very important is this in the invisible part, uh, the uh, behind this mechanical eyes. This, uh, I think, uh, Trevor, the photographer, uh, the artist uh, Trevor Peglin, uh, said uh, said it really well. I think uh, I came across this crawl, and when I when I was looking at the Taiwanese artist video work. He says ways of seeing are, are never purely aesthetic. They are always hidden assumptions and points of power built into perception. I think that was the case also in the uh, surveillance camera, the power relationship. It's just there. And then if you destroy it, the surveillance camera or remove it, you will be the charge for the, you'll be, you'll be prosecuted or charged for a fee. And then it was just there. And then you, there's no way you can, move it or, or, you know, damage it. And then, uh, and also as some certain more uh, a form of a surveillance camera, they are more advanced. They can tell whether you're a human or non-human and the mechanism of the program built behind this uh, algorithms is just um, sometimes they're like this hidden bias or, or un unconscious bias. Uh, build behind each algorithm, and it's 
uh, worth exploring. And that's what Trevor Paglin was doing. And then I find some Taiwanese counterpart, uh, the Zhen Chen Yu in the situation. So I think it's very important, uh, very, very interesting work. Uh, uh, and it's addressing uh, some of the issues in, in concerning in Taiwan, our privacy and then safety and, and, and the relationship of being seen consciously or unconsciously. Yeah, we're becoming image. Uh, it's a conscious process becoming image and make it useful, but uh, it's as inescapable since there's no way that you don't you, that you can um, live without a, an ID card. I mean, there's always a way that if you want to survive in you know function properly in a civic society, you, you need an ID card at some point. And to make a valid ID card, you need an ID photo. So uh, the whole system, there's this. Uh, it, violence in a way almost uh, in its uh, a mechanism so it's worth uh, reflect on that and and another uh, interesting interesting project that i came across recently is this uh i is this organization called iorg uh, information operation uh, uh organization in, in taiwan and then uh what they're doing is they're actually, they're not any like, uh, they're, they're a group of people of like journalists or computer engineers or program designers and CV, uh, activists and some artists too. And, but what they were really doing, but it's not an artist collective or, or art group in, in any, any form, but, but what they're doing is really important to, add, uh, to Taiwan and and actually related to photography. And this is their website called IORG Taiwan and then slash archive. You can see a lot of those uh, like thumbnails. And when you click it and you will see uh, this. So basically a screen screenshots of websites or social media page. And then the content wise, it's basically uh, the the, from their research, uh, there there were always some quotes. Their source of information, uh, their links to certain web page, but as we all know, like you know, the the web page maybe uh, this will be gone when they update their website, or they were taken down. Some of the content were taken down, voluntarily or vo un involuntarily. Uh, for some reason, they would take down like. Uh, sensitive contents or, or uh, for, for certain reasons. Uh, for instance, uh, there's some newspaper in Taiwan which, which is more pro-China and they would take down all those July, uh, June 4th, uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, that kind of news. So you can no longer uh, find any of that on the internet. And then, and to preserve your source of information how, how do you do that? And the, the idea is to do, a, and the web page, the idea is to is do the screenshot. It's very, it's like the documentary photography. Like when you do the screenshot of the web page, even if it disappear one day, you still have a, a screenshot. And then it, it will, uh, it's very much like what the internet archive would doing. They're archiving a lot of like web page. So, People would always go back to, but here it's a screenshot, it's an image. And then uh, even if the original web page was taken down for whatever reasons, they will have a, uh, a proof to um, to show that that's where we how we quoted and where we quoted and that's how it looks like. And because some of the web page, the content is constantly changing, you have no idea. And so with the with the screenshot uh, of the you can see uh, uh, there's a different there's a two two things two uh, two images the the smaller one was actually on the bottom right corner it says the author specified the author and the platform with where is it and then the time when it's first published and then the the time they archived 
and also they show you uh, give you the link to the original source. So I think this uh, is very interesting uh, uh, practice of photography, but in a very different context. But it's important because function the screenshot uh, is important because they're like they're taking picture in the uh, digital environment and this uh, image uh, is important to the uh, fragile democracy in, in Taiwan. But I mean, fragile is, doesn't mean it's weak, but they're like people, organization like this working to uh, defend uh, the, the democracy. So I think it's really helpful. So um, that's another thing that I was thinking, like the screenshot can be, uh, can be a thing. Uh, for the future, and then, but uh, this is the example that really uh, I, I came across. It really inspired me, uh, uh, it, and it's happening in Taiwan because we are not only under the pandemic situation, but also the information. I mean, the info, infodemic, all those uh, misinformations or disinformation coming from China is just, uh, it's. It's terrible, and then uh, we're the, basically the idea is to create is uh, is causing this uh, to wage a cognitive warfare in Taiwan, so they can take over Taiwan without any army, any uh, any military force. So that's what we're uh, living in. That was being experienced in Taiwan every day. This is our like everyday life, discerning fake news and like the real news. And then there's some organization we're uh, working on it and then they're using screenshots and then oh, photography in a very different way uh, in digital world. So uh, yeah, that's the, uh, I think the strengths of documentary photography is still, it's in, in, in digital world, it's still a very important way to preserve the, uh, uh, to archive, to preserve the memories. Okay, uh, that's that for now. And then, uh, and then I'm going to address these uh, international exchange under the pandemic situation. This is the web page of the organization that we are working with. Uh, currently, it's Hong Kong International Photo Fest. The great people we worked together before, and then two years, and then we've been constantly in touch. And then uh, uh, the situation in in. In Hong Kong is very different. It's just two years, but uh, it's a very different place now. Uh, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're, we're still working, collaborating this year in, in October. We're working on that. And, the, and what we're proposing to the Hong Kong International Fall Fest is that uh, instead of, uh, uh, instead of, uh, shipping and making all the prints specifically for the, uh, the for this year's edition why don't we relocate the resources that we have to empower young and up-and-coming artists in Taiwan meaning in the past we were you know when it comes to uh, photo fest I mean we were a lot of a uh, 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 quite amount of money was spent on the production of prints and the shipments and back and forth and then insurance and installation and all that. And I was thinking, but, but now, uh, but the thing is that it would be great if the artists can go there with the work and then that's the best case scenario. But in, in the pandemic situation, if only the work travels without the author, it's just, not the, the right kind of experience that uh, uh, inter exchange experience. So I was thinking, since we cannot physically be there, there's a high chance that we can't be there. So perhaps we can use the money wisely. Uh, we, instead of, uh, we can turn this production fee, the money into a workshop. So, and they're, they're okay. So basically we, we we're working on, uh, we have, we're, we're organizing a uh, six months workshop. And then we invite some young artists to explore. They, they all have their uh, photography project, but we want to encourage them to explore 
uh, to the this uh, trans narrative, uh, transmedia narrative. I mean, I mean, explore the the boundary between moving image and still image. We were we 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 we're trying to encourage them to um, to produce uh, a transmedia work that not limiting themselves to only still image, but they can use like voice like voice it's voices or the sounds or any symbol or text and make a uh, something in between photography and the cinema uh, and so and then so it's basically a word that can be play project and play by itself a word that had its own reason and sequence so uh it's not like uh steel work that it's just hand on the wall but a, a a piece of work that that it can when it's play and project it has its own rhythm and people can uh look at it i'm just going to and one of the i hope i i, I get my <laughs> i hope i explain it uh properly and then the classic example would be something like la jate in uh, 1962 the the sci-fi uh documentary almost made of uh mostly made of uh, the steel images but it's a it would be the the la jete uh was i think it inspired a lot of uh works like 12 monkeys and other other movies but i i believe there should uh there could be more uh, uh contemporary interpretation or or creative uh, inventive use of steel image under the pandemic so when we encourage the, uh, when we relocate a resource to create a, uh, the workshop, we arrange, we, we, we hire, we invite some of the mentors, more established experienced <clears throat> photography artists, critics to work with the young photographers to help them to discuss with them uh, how to turn their, further turn their uh, still uh, photography work a bit further to see some possibility to, not just in book form, but also uh, in a transmedia uh, to create a transmedia narrative, and then it can be played in a cinema. And then, um, th so the 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 file can be can be easily portable and transferred from place to place. And then, in a proper setting, like in in a dark room cinema, it can be played and also can be played in a uh, gallery space. In, in many uh, different ways like projections or with uh, LED screens or, or installations showing the various sites. And it's almost like a choreography. You can, you can show them in one space at the same time or in a cinema and going one by one. So there must many possibilities. And then we're using the resources, limited resources to empower the uh, the young artists and also create a connection between the more established ones, uh, ones with the younger ones. So it's a more collaborative kind of working. So they don't work alone. Even during the pandemic situation, they can meet up with each other and then work together. So, and one of the uh, good example I hope to show is uh, the Rosso by Yue Ling Li. He's a Taiwanese artist, his photography. He's, he's a photographer. He, uh, Rosso uh, is a publication, but in addition to a photo book, he actually made a um, a video, almost like a video. I, a video may not be the right word for it, but it's some something between uh, photography and, and cinema. It, I I remember once I I I asked him to to name the work I and mean, what what category would you put it or what how would you describe the work he he replied to me uh, uh, something like motion stills anyway I hope I wish I could uh, play a little bit just maybe thirty seconds so you get a sense of it and then uh, let me share new sharing okay let me let me see if, I I think I can do it. And then uh, this this guy. I hope you can see that. Yes. And then I'm I'm gonna play a little bit, just thirty seconds, so you you can see you can get a sense of it. Okay,
全屏幕吗？哦、oh, ，OK。这听得到吗Okay. Um. All right. Let me go back to the、uh, the the keynotes. Okay. I hope I hope I, I hope you get the sense of uh how this so-called transmedia uh what we call it、uh, the transmedia narrative、uh, looks like and that what we've been working on. So we encourage the uh the photog uh the photographer young photographers to to further to you know to explore the possibility of creating uh this. This kind of work, and so it it's more portable. It's easier to、uh, to share, and then there more、uh, possibility to to display. And、uh, this is just one example. And I would really encourage you to see the whole thing. It was really interesting, and then will show you a very different、uh, aspect of Taiwan, Taiwanese society. And it's very psychological, and then mysterious, and then I don't know. It's the psyche. It, it captures. I mean, I think really these capture very well as, as some aspect of、uh, Taiwanese, the psyche of Taiwanese society. And then、uh, it's, I said to me, it's really brilliant. It, it resonate with me. But but it's not for everybody. But yeah, <laughs> I like it. So the last slide, and then the the future of Taiwanese photography in Taiwan. This building、uh, is、uh, the National Center of Photography. In, Of photography and image in Taiwan, it's one of the first one of its kind,、uh, first one and the first of its kind, and the first national center,、uh, first national institution dedicated to photography. And then,、uh, as you can see from the outside, it's a very old building.、Uh, it was built during the Japanese period,、uh, it's, it's about eighty eighty years ago, not so long ago, but yeah. And then、uh, it's a historic building, and and now we're having like. Two shows going on. One is about Taiwanese photography, the history of Taiwanese photography, from like 19th centuries, mid 19th centuries to、uh, to the to the World War Two, and another one is actually、uh, curated by a、uh, British、uh, curator, David Campany, and it's called A Handful of Dust.、Uh, it's a brilliant show, and. It's our last stop. I think that Taiwan is the last stop of of this of the show he created. <clears throat> it, it's brilliant. So the idea is for the institution is to show two、uh, kinds of show. Two, one is more、uh, a Taiwanese、uh, his, historical, and another one is more contemporary and also international. And then、uh, it's a small institution, and、um, but it's.、Uh, Important first step, and then、uh, not they don't they don't have、uh, a lot of staff at the moment. Just maybe fourteen people, thirteen people.、Uh, but it's an important first step for Taiwan because finally the the government is recognizing the、uh, is working on recognizing the importance and the value of <clears throat> photography, and then we finally have a. a Public venue for international exchange because in the past it was just we don't have a, a proper space to to、uh, 
to accommodate the guests outside Taiwan. So, but now we have a place to showcase. And then for younger photographers, I think it's important because they have somewhere to go to. They, they will see some works that they, they will explore, they will discover some work local, by local photographers uh, from different uh, uh, period of times. And then some of them may get inspired that one day he would want to see his work there, shown there and be collected by the institutions. And there's, you know, some, something to some 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 goals to to strive strive for so uh i think it's so it's it's very important it's not just the uh the physical physicality but also the the ideal and the value it represent uh it could it could stand for so uh but to but the in but the thing is to me uh the future to really know the future of photography in taiwan i think it's we really have to have to have more researcher doing the research about the history of, of photography in Taiwan. I think only when we know uh, how we arrived here and then the, the complex process and the role people have, token, have taken and, and the values uh, that the previous generation is fighting for, it, can we uh, see the, the past to the unforeseeable future. I mean, just it's really important to 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 me. The the most one of the most important job for the institution is really about the research, a solid research of the the history of of photography in Taiwan, and really help the younger generation and 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 the people at the moment in in Taiwan. To, to help them to to know how to how to see our past uh, collectively and then and perhaps we know how to where we where we're going in, in in the future okay that's that's that sorry it's not very organized but i i done my best and i hope uh i didn't bore you too much and then uh, if you ever come to taipei in taiwan in near future please feel free to visit us and if you recognize me, uh, give me a shout and I would uh, definitely show you, uh, give you a quick guided tour of the library and show you Taiwanese, what Taiwanese photography is like and yeah, and perhaps make you some friends in, in here. So thank you. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, Sleng Pin Sao. That was, that was amazing. Um, I actually, I have to say, like, I've been to quite a few photo book libraries in my time, and I remember going to yours, even when you were just launching it, like, which was a few years ago, and, yeah. and I thought it was a wonderful space. Um, I think it's one of the nicest photo book libraries I've ever actually been to. Uh, um, I, I can see why people like to hang out there and why you, or how you've built um, such a community. Um, it's really, really admirable. Um, and and I, I suppose from the from the number of times that I've been to Taiwan, I'm actually shocked that it's taken until now to have a national <laughs> center of photography because I've always I've always quite admired how strong the photography community is there. Um, everyone's so supportive. Um, and and yeah, it, I I yeah I think it's really it's really admirable and 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 that you're playing such a huge role in in being being a part of that and, and making it all happen so um so yeah thanks very much it's been a real pleasure Thank to you, have you have you join us um next everyone we have Peggy Peggy Sue Amundsen um he's joining us from Berlin uh, but we're going to take a five minute break and uh, we'll see you then <laughs>